Good evening. As we prepare to celebrate today's liturgy, we invite you to, or, or, and welcome to St. Mary of Vernon. The presider today is our pastor, Father Ignatius. He is assisted by Deacon Jim Wogan. The gathering song is we, a place at the table. It's on the first page of your worship aid. We will sing verses one and three. Thank you. Justice and joy. For we are all the place at the table, revised in the head, a part in the song. The hands of a child in hands that are wrinkled, for young and for old, the right to. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Father. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen. My brothers and sisters, in our gospel reading today, the Lord Jesus Christ points out to us again, it is not what goes into one that makes them sinful, but every sin comes from the heart. So let us pause for a moment, and the times that we have not given our heart, the whole of who we are to our God, and to follow God's will, at those times, let us ask for God's mercy and for God's forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you responded to those in need with unconditional love and mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you call us to be your voice in today's world. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the way, the truth, and the light for all ages. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. See 
Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, pour into our hearts the love of your name so that by, the, by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good and by your watchful care keep safe what you have nurtured through our lord jesus christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the holy spirit god forever and ever amen, amen. thank you A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Now Israel, hear the statutes and decrees which I am teaching you to observe, that you may live and enter in and take possession of the land which the Lord, the God of your fathers, is giving you. In your observance of the commandments of the Lord, your God, which I enjoin upon you, you shall not add to what I command you, nor subtract from it. Observe them carefully, for thus will you give evidence of your wisdom and intelligence to the nations, who will hear of all these statutes and say, this great nation is truly a wise and intelligent people. For what great nation is there that has God so close to it as the Lord, our God, is to us whenever we call upon him? Or what great nation has statutes and decrees that are as just as this whole law which I am setting before you today. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The words to the response are, the one who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord.
a reading from the letter of St. James. Dearest brothers and sisters, all good giving and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no alteration or shadow caused by change. He willed to give us birth by the word of truth, that we may be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Humbly welcome the word that has been planted in you and is able to save your souls. Be doers of the word and not hearers only, deluding yourselves. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained by the world. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. With the Pharisees, with some scribes who had come from Jerusalem, gathered around Jesus, they observed that some of his disciples ate their meals with unclean, that is, unwashed hands. For the Pharisees, and in fact all Jews, do not eat without carefully washing their hands, keeping the tradition of the elders. And on coming from the marketplace, they do not eat without purifying themselves. And there are many other things that they do traditionally and observe those. The purification of cups and jugs and kettles and beds. So the Pharisees and scribes questioned him, why do your disciples not follow the tradition of the elders, but instead eat a meal with unclean hands. <clears throat> he responded, well did Isaiah prophesy about you hypocrites, as it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching, to doc teaching as doctrines human precepts. You disregard God's commandments, but cling to human tradition. He summoned the crowd again and said to them, hear me all of you and understand, nothing that enters one from outside can defile that person, but the things that come out from within are what defile. From within people, from their hearts, come evil thoughts, unchastity, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, licentiousness, 
envy, blasphemy, arrogance, folly. All these evils come from within, and they defile. The Gospel of the Lord. Good evening again, everyone. I am sure I will not be wrong or far from the truth if I say, I am sure every one of us knows at least one person or two that complains a lot. They complain about anything and everything. And the Pharisees we hear in the gospel today seem to be one of those people. The Pharisees complained about John the Baptist when John was in the wilderness without eating and drinking, except for feeding on, you know, the locusts and white honey. They complained about him that he was one that excluded himself from people. When Jesus came and was very friendly, socializing with everyone, eating and drinking, they complained, calling him a gluten, a friend of task collectors and sinners. When the apostles walked um, in the midst of the grain on a Sabbath and they were hungry and they got some grain to eat, they complained about the apostles not keeping the Sabbath. And today again, because the apostles ate without washing their hands, they once again complained. One of the things about people that complain or what they don't understand is that if someone complains about anything and everything, no one takes them seriously. Or if everything becomes very important that you complain about it, then nothing is really important. When people do that and they complain, you see that no one will take them seriously. As a priest or pastor, I will tell you, one of my modes of making decision in anything is I, I always ask myself, is this worth fighting for? Because I know once I make the decision, one person or two, a couple of people will complain about it. So is it worth the time to fight for it? But yet when we look at what the Pharisees were complaining about, it was something that was not really important. The Gospel of Mark is generally believed to have been written predominantly for non-Jewish uh, Christians living predominantly in Rome. And this has to do with the culture. So early Christians were Jews and they have now taken the Christian religion to Rome. And so what is happening is that when they brought it to Rome, they also brought their culture, their customs, what they believe. And so how could they differentiate what is authentic and core to Christianity and preach that apart from their culture? So in terms of preaching, washing their hands before eating, yes, it was for spiritual or religious purification, but it was also mainly because of hygienic reasons. It's almost the same thing we do today where you tell your child, wash your hand before eating. And so they're making that to be very important without looking at what is important in the faith itself, the teaching of Jesus Christ. So Jesus is trying to teach or tell us what is the authentic aspect of our faith that we need to preach and preach that in every culture. When the faith encounters any culture at all, what the faith our Christian belief does is that it's almost like a touch light that shines on that culture to point out what is good in that culture and what is not good in it. Because the seed of the gospel, if the gospel is the word of God and the word of life, and the seed of the gospel is in every culture. And it, and it 
does criticize every culture. That is objective criticism of every culture. And so when we look at that, what Jesus is saying is not that we would not, or my point is not that we do not have objective criticism. We do. It is the same thing that we need to do, not just in the culture, but also in us, because it begins in our heart. If we meditate on the gospel, think about it. it what it does in the culture is supposed to do that in our heart. And that is where it begins for us to have that conversion within us. And so when we have that conversion within us, then we can truly be objective in you know, looking at the culture around us, looking at what is going on and people's opinion. And when we do that to offer our own opinion, it has to be done out of love. It has to be done out of love from the heart, from our heart that is connected to God and connected to our Lord Jesus Christ. And so with David, we pray, create a clean heart in us, O Lord, and renew within us your steadfast spirit. Please stand. Let us now together profess our faith in our God. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, one of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, unsubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnated the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and he seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to joy, the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one the baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the Amen. life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, to our Father in heaven who hears the yearning of every heart, let us raise up our prayers. And our response is, Lord, accept our prayer. We pray for the Holy Spirit to guide church leaders as they promote justice and healing for victims and survivors of abuse. We pray. Lord, accept our prayer. For those in positions of political leadership, may they create laws that protect the dignity of the orphans, widows, the unborn, the aged, and all without a voice, we pray. Lord, accept our prayer. On this Labor Day weekend, we pray for all who labor and are in need of rest. May their minds, bodies, and spirits be strengthened to continue Christ's work, we pray. Lord, accept our prayer for unity among all peoples. May we work to end divisions in our world, in our communities, our homes, and in our own hearts, we pray. Lord, accept our prayer. We pray for those in need of spiritual healing, for Adrian Cash, we pray. Lord, accept our prayer. We pray for those who are sick, for Eleanor Prusky and Rose, and for all the sick and those who care for them, we pray. Lord, accept our prayer. For those who have died, most recently for Bernadette Michaels and for Rose McFadden and for Ron Zemla and for all who grieve the loss of someone dear to them, we pray. Lord, accept our prayer. For all of our own intentions, 
We pray. Lord, accept our prayer. For the holiness of the parishioners of St. Mary of Vernon, for the holiness of those who've asked for our prayers, those we have promised our prayers, those who are in most need of God's presence today, and for those who have no one to pray for them, we pray. Lord, accept our prayer. Loving God, we place these prayers before you with humble hearts. If they are in accord with your will, answer them and give us the insight and courage to be an answer to someone else's prayer this week. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we bring our gifts forward, please join in singing Tend the Ground. It's in the middle of the booklet. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this sacrifice of yours and mine may be acceptable to the Lord, the God Almighty. Amen. 
May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery it may accomplish in power through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works. For you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and walking of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things, making them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Holy Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said a blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Until Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, 
his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and are filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an everlasting offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence will rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, which your servant Francis, our Pope, lays our bishop, the other of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestowed on the world all that is good through him and with him and in him O god almighty father in the unity of the holy spirit all glory and honor is yours forever and ever the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as this is heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all unnecessary and useless anxieties as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours. First now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I leave you peace my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. And with your spirit. Let's take a moment now to offer one another a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. As we come forward to receive the body and blood of Jesus, Please join in singing the Supper of the Lord. Precious body, precious blood, seen as bread and wine. Here the Lord prepares the feast divine. Bread of love is broken now. Cup of life is poured. Come share the supper of the Lord. This is the bread of God coming down from heaven, giving life to Um, 
Today is your last chance to order fall mums and support your youth ministry. Order forms are in the narthex. High school teens, don't miss Alpha Omega's awesome kickoff event, Bananarama, on September 8th at 6.30 p.m. Drive around in a scavenger hunt and then feast on our fa famous 100-foot long banana split. Bring your friends. Oktoberfest is coming September 14th. Get your tickets in the narthex. Please see the bulletin for details on our move to the Paris Center for masses starting September 16th. We need to upgrade our church lighting system. Teens and children, we would love to hear your voices in our special choirs. Please contact our music director, Mark Schmitz, if you'd like to join. Have a most happy Labor Day weekend. Parish offices, offices will be closed on Monday. As you heard in, our, in the announcement, um, from September 16th, we will not be celebrating Mass here for a couple of months just to correct the lighting in the church. If you go to the bulletin, when you pick up the bulletin, page 7, there's an article there from Jen. Okay, Jen Daniels, our business manager. So this is just to let you know, so this Sunday we have Mass here. So in three weeks' time, our mass will be in the parish center. And of course, this is not the first time St. Mary of Vernon have had masses in the parish center. When the church was being built in 2005, they had mass in the parish center. So just to let you know, morning mass and Eucharistic adoration will continue to be in the chapel. But every other large liturgy, like mass, will be in the parish center. And then also this month, uh, Chicago Catholics features our own very own Jim Wogan, you know, so he's very popular now. So as you leave, pick a copy of Chicago Catholics, and then uh, it talks about furniture ministry, okay? So it talks about the work they've been doing for the past 30 years. So Jim and the volunteers, Bruce Kaczynski, he's right a man, right? That's the way they describe him. So they've been doing a great job. So just we continue to thank you all for all you continue to do. The light that we're going to change is going to cost us a lot of money and it's because of your generosity from the Four Hour Future campaign. So I continue to express my gratitude to each and every one of you for your generosity to St. Mary of Vernon. Let us pray.
renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and steer us to serve you in our neighbor through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's go now in peace to glorify God with our lives. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Please join in singing our closing song, Canticle of the Sun. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and all creation is shouting for joy. Come dance in the forest, come play in the field, and sing, sing to the glory of the Lord. Praise for the sun. in 